LEAF, or Linking Ecology and Art of the Floodplain Program, is brought to you in partnership by the Columbia Museum of Art and Congaree National Park. This program was made possible by generous donors who believe in the power of scientific literacy. Special thanks to the Dominion Energy Charitable Foundation and Richland County for their grant support. Well, welcome to Virtual LEAF. We are so glad to have you joining us uh, virtually here at Congaree National Park, where I am. I'm Ranger John, and I am joined here by... Hi, I'm Ranger David. I'm Ranger Claudia. And I'm Glenna Barlow. I'm the Curator of Education here at the Columbia Museum of Art. And we are really glad to have you with us here. This is a really exciting and fun virtual field trip that we're going to take you through in your own classroom. So when you think of a park, what is the image that comes to your mind? Now, for many of us, if you hear the word park, you're gonna think of some place that might have swing sets and slides and jungle gyms and sports fields and ball courts. And those are great parks. They are places for you to get outside and to get exercise, but a national park like Congaree is a very different kind of park. This is, in a way, a natural playground. We don't have jungle gyms and ball fields, but it's a place where you can come outside, you get some fresh air, and you can learn about nature and history because this park protects those two things. Here at Congaree National Park, this is a really great place to talk about how important soil is to our everyday lives. Congaree is a really special place because we protect the old forest that is part of the Congaree River floodplain. So why is a floodplain? A floodplain is a very flat place that is low and it's along a river or a stream. And when it rains in the floodplain, it gets covered with water. So think about it like your bathtub at home. When you are about to take a shower, if you forget to turn off the faucet, then all that water goes into the bathtub and at some point, the bathtub cannot take any more and it starts uh, spilling out and it goes on the floor. So it covers the whole floor with water. The same thing happens here. When it rains, the river cannot take any more water. So all that water gets covered in this area. So it's actually a good thing because all that water that comes through here, it brings soil and different nutrients. And those nutrients in that soil helps the trees around us that you see here to grow bigger and stronger. So today you're going to learn about soils and how soils behave in different environments around the park. We're going to be studying soils, but we're going to be thinking about three things that happen to soils. Where do they come from? How do they get moved? And where do they go? Because soils change. And we're going to talk about that. There are three big words we need to know. The first of these words is weathering. And weathering happens when sun and rain break rocks apart into smaller particles. And so in order to represent all these processes, we're going to have some dances. So I need you to dance with me, please. Even if you're at home, you can manage these things sitting in a chair or standing up. Just don't knock anything over or hit anybody, please. So to show weathering, we're going to put our hands together like they're a rock and you can squeeze them. But then the sun shines and the rain falls and it freezes and it thaws and the sun shines and it gets cold and hot. And that rock's going to start to break up. So we're going to wiggle our fingers a little bit. And that rock is weathering. Our word is weathering as that rock breaks up. Now eventually the wind and the water are gonna come along and they're gonna pick up some of those little particles. And this is a fancy E word called erosion. So our dance for erosion is just this. Erosion, 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 erosion. Now after a while that wind or that water, they're gonna get tired of carrying that stuff and they're gonna wanna put it down. And our fancy word for this is deposition. And our deposition dance is this, deposition, deposition. So all these three dances are going to happen. We get a rock and we get weathering, 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 erosion, 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 deposition, deposition. Now the cool thing about these processes is they are going on all the time. 
You're asleep, they're happening. You're eating breakfast, they're happening. You're at dance practice, they're happening. You are playing video games, they're happening. All the time. So now I need for you to dance with me and we're gonna see if we can keep up with mother nature. Oh, and one more trick. They don't always have to happen in the same order. Sometimes when soils get laid down and deposited in an area, they can be weathered again. They can be weathered while they're being eroded. And this happens all the time in a cycle. So see if you can keep up with me and mother nature. We're gonna try this. So we're gonna start with weathering, 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 erosion, 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 deposition, deposition. Faster, weathering, 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 erosion, 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 weathering, weathering, deposition, deposition, weathering, weathering, erosion, erosion, deposition, weathering, weathering, deposition, weathering, erosion, erosion, deposition, oh! And it all, we can't keep up, but Mother Nature's out there doing it all the time, and landscapes are forming all around us, hills, valleys, mountains, all these water bodies are carrying that stuff away, our streams, our rivers, changing all the time, and all the time they're making making soils, they're changing soils, giving plants a chance to grow. We can see these changes all around us. So we're going to be thinking about that through all of our activities as an artist, as a scientist, and as an explorer today. So when you hear the word soil, you might be thinking of another word. You might be thinking of the word dirt. And soil is really so much more than dirt, because soil is kind of like a cake. You have to have different ingredients to make soil. And there are four main ingredients that go in soil. Now, different soils might have one of these ingredients. They might have only two. They might have all four. But to have soil, you have to have all four of these ingredients or a couple of them. Let's go over these together one by one. So the first one, it rhymes with the word band. You might find it at a beach. Do you know what that part of soil is? If you said sand, you're right. So sand is little pieces of rock that have broken down over time and have been carried by wind or water and left behind. So the second ingredient that we can find in soil is actually something you can find in your school. You might see it in your art class when you're doing certain art projects. This part of soil is something that it holds its shape really well. You can make it into a ball or even into a cup or a plate. Do you remember what this part of soil is? It's clay. So clay is that part of soil that helps it stick together sometimes. And not all soil has it, but if you squeeze soil together and it holds its shape, it probably has a little bit of clay in there. And clay also comes from rocks that have broken down over time. Now the third part of soil, it rhymes with the word tilt. And you might not see it very easily if you look at soil, but if you pick up some soil in your hands and then open your hand and drop that soil out of it and look at your hand, you might see what looks like dust that's left behind on your hand. And that is the third part of soil. That is called silt. And silt is also coming from rocks but it's really, really small, and it can get carried around by wind or water too, and it has a lot of the nutrients, the vitamins, that many things need to survive. And the fourth part of soil, I can show you that real easy. This is the fourth part of soil right here. Now, the word for this is humus. Now, if you see humus on a piece of paper, it might look like something you find in your grocery store. It might look like hummus, but this isn't something you want to put on a pita chip. Humus is really a really fancy word for all the pieces of dead plants and animals, mostly plants though, that have fallen down to the forest floor and they've broken up over time. And all of these pieces of those trees and plants, they have a lot of those things that other plants are gonna need to soak in and use to grow and get big and tall. So you started learning a little bit about soils and how they interact with, 
with water in different environments, in different habitats. But today you're gonna get to do three things. You're gonna get to be an artist and learn to draw and represent soils in the paintings. You're also gonna get to be a scientist and you're gonna be part of a mud lab. And in that lab, you're gonna do experiments to learn about soil and how they behave in different environments and habitats. And then you're going to get to be an explorer. You're gonna go on a walk and then you're gonna get to observe and learn more about the soils and the animals that live here in the park. So have fun and I hope you learn a lot about soils today.